if you want to get into alternative photography, where do you start? Today we're going to cover Van Dyke Brown. Now if you've already done Cyanotype, then you're familiar with one of the chemicals in that process which is used in Van Dyke Brown. Van Dyke Brown is kind of a cheaper version of making soft paper prints because the cost of silver nitrate is quite expensive. But in Van Dyke Brown process, it's inexpensive and you don't use so much silver in it. In this video, I'm going to cover the chemicals that you'll need the fixer, making your own fixer, uh, the strip test and how to get the perfect exposure and what time you need for the exposure under UV light. We'll use the UV LED box that I made in a previous video or you can make your own. Uh, I'll put a link to that video up here and at the end of the video I'll show you my results. So let's get started. So how would you make Van Dyke brown if you want to make it yourself? Well, this little bottle here is about 100 milliliters and you make three parts of 33 milliliters of distilled water. Very important to use distilled water in alternative processes, especially when you're using silver nitrate because silver nitrate will react to anything that's organic in the water. So distilled water is an absolute must for most alternative photography processes if you want to have a good uh, print at the end and no contamination. So in the Van Dyke Brown process you make three solutions. The first solution will have 33 milliliters of distilled water with 9 grams of ferric ammonium citrate. Now it's the same chemical that's used in the cyanotype. Then the next solution of 33 milliliters of distilled water, uh, you need 1.5 grams of tartic acid. And then the last part, part C, because they're A, B, and C, and you mix them A to B and B to C. And the last part C, which is your silver nitrate, you need 3.8 grams of silver nitrate in 33 milliliters of distilled water. You mix all that up with a glass rod. Don't use a metal rod or a metal container. Keep metal away from alternative processes. That's really important. That's why the hake brush is used because it doesn't have any uh, metal in, in the brush at all. It's, it's naturally made, it's handmade, it's wooden and it's just got fibers at the end and, and, and sewn together. So now that we have the chemicals to make our sensitizer, the, which we paint onto the paper, so let's talk about the fixer. Now the fixer for Van Dyke Brown is not water. Unfortunately, that would be lovely. I mean, cyanotype, yeah, we just washed the print afterwards. But the fixer for Van Dyke Brown has to be hypo. Hypo is sodium trisulfate. Now you need to make this yourself. You can buy these chemicals fairly cheap on the internet. Of course you can buy it pre-made, but I recommend to make it fresh because it's so inexpensive. And actually, if you buy the sodium trisulfate, you can use that fixer for film photography, for wet plate, you can use it for a lot of, lot of uh, processes that have silver in it. So here I have my, my fixer made. I have it in a glass bottle and it's 3%. Some people like to go with 5%. I like 3% because I like to take it a little slowly because when you take out the print, it should be kind of orange and then it will go to this kind of nice chocolatey, chocolatey brown of the Van Dyke process and then it will get dark. Uh, there is methods of also toning your Van Dyke Brown uh, and controlling contrast control of your Van Dyke Brown, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. I just want to do an introduction on the Van Dyke Brown process using the UV box so we can have complete control of the UV process. So uh, now that we've talked about the developer and the fixer, and the paper is probably drying under my couch in the dark because you need to put your paper somewhere out of sunlight so it won't react. That's very important. I keep mine actually under the couch because it's pretty dark under there. Um, once that's dry, I'm going to print it out uh, with the little negative here. I want to see what the best exposure is. So let's go. 
so I have my sensitized paper is dry. It's under a glass plate here with my test strip negative set up. And we're gonna do our test print. And this will be for six minutes, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, and one. So after you've done the strip test, you should get something that looks like this. Now we're gonna bring this into the fixer. It'll get much darker. Uh, I mean, I've gotta say these chemicals are really old, but it's gonna be interesting to see if we get a good result out of this. So as I said, we have, I think, we see either five, four, three, two, one minute. Yeah, that's, we're gonna find out where our exposure is. And then I can do a print on this yeah, so now I'm going to pour my fixer in here. Okay. And then we're going to put our print in, our test strip, and we're going to see how this looks. You'll notice straight away it should start to get darker. It's getting quite dark. Doesn't take much to fix this. Wow. We could be at a minute here, or two minutes, so we could, that, that LED light looks like it's very strong. It might be too strong for this process. Okay, so because that's one minute, and that's that's your two minutes that's your three minutes it's your four and it's your five so somewhere between one and two minutes uh, is definitely going to be exposure but I got a feeling when this dries out when we wash this out uh, we're gonna we're looking at uh, one minute somewhere maybe even less than one minute already reduce the actual power of the LED box. Uh, that's pretty strong, I didn't expect that. So, let's go and wash that print. So when I dried my print and I looked at it this morning, I'm looking at the one minute mark here. Uh, I was quite surprised that had that it didn't need so much time at all. Uh, so what I've done is I've reduced my UV box to half power. So here's the UV box on. And you can see there's the lid just closing. I'm gonna put it on half power now. I just take out one of the connectors in the front. And you can see that one line is now switched off. So I just basically close the lid and put my print in there. So that means that it will, should have half the amount of light. So it'll be twice the amount of time. So this one minute will become two minutes. And what I've done is I've made it a 140 seconds uh, for this, for my exposure. Now I'm gonna fix the, the print here. So it will go directly in the fixer now. So this is the one I made on the UV box. Let's just put that in here. See, it darkens up really straight away. And just gently, gently just rub the chemicals over. Now, it only really needs about, ah, about 30, 30 seconds to a minute in this. I mean, this is a weak solution of fixer. It's 3% hypo. Uh, that's uh, sodium trisulfate mixed in a liter of water. In distilled water. I gotta use distilled water because of the uh, amount of calcium in our water here because of the Alps. So that looks pretty pretty much done. Now that will darken up. That will darken up um, once it's dried and then I'll scan it and I'll show it to you. So I'm very happy with the uh, result of these, even though they're old chemicals, this uh, this process is wonderful. And now that I can do it with the UV uh, UV box at any time of the year, I just 
just that's just super because you can, that means you can do alternate photography anytime you want really in the middle of the night if you want or in the middle of the darkest winter uh, and also you can be consistent with your results as well already subscribed please hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the little notification bell and hope to see you on the next video goodbye